Well, Alan, Noel, thank you so much for joining us on the Sports Center. It's really too good to talk about your career and what you've, you've experienced and how you've been handling cricket and how you've grown as a player. So thank you so much for joining us on the show. Pleasure. Thank you. Alan, talk about the first thing. Obviously, you've got the, the job as an, as an arts coach. Um, were you a bit, I would say, relieved to hear that you, you, you got the position? <laughs> uh, it's something that I've, I've really been wanting to do for quite some time now. Um, and, um, you, know, you know, every coach strives to be uh, uh, something a bit better. And, uh, you know, I've always been labelled as, as the specialist coach um, and um, a, a bowling coach. And, and, and so I've, I've, I've really been lucky. I must say I've been in, incredibly fortunate to have spent uh, time in, in, in various dressing rooms in different countries, uh, IPLs, um, you know, it, those are the places where I, uh, you know, I wouldn't say you learn quite a bit from other coaches and their philosophies and their, and their cultures and identities, but you learn so much more from those players that you work with. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I was really lucky, very, very fortunate. And, um, you know, always, people always see me sitting there in the dugouts with my little black book. And uh, that's not necessarily just dotting down what's happening in the game. Um, but it's also, a, 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 I'm always listening to, to some of these big players like Coley and, uh, Coley and Shane Watson and these guys, what they might be saying in a, in a it might be in a team room environment, might be uh, in a team meeting, it might be actually just sitting in the dugout. Um, and a, and a, and a fly-by-night or fly or throwaway comment might come my way, you know. So always um, just trying to get these things down. Um, but look, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very f uh, uh, happy where I am currently. You know, I've been, uh, I couldn't have come in at a, at a better time. They always say there's a time for everything. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've had some great mentors and Bob Woolmer and, and, and coaches that I've worked with and ex-players. And... Um, uh, current crop of, of young coaches around the world that uh, I've, I've really had a, a, a look into and shared some thoughts with. Um, so be, be now in this, this role with the Knights is, is, is a, I think is a time couldn't be better because we've recruited really, really well. Uh, fresh faces uh, that's come in, five of them uh, that's come in. And, uh, you know, so it just needed that sort of you know, let's start the flame again, you know, uh, the, the Knights, because we've always been, we've always uh, showed our teeth in the season and, and um, we've always uh, sort of threatened to win a competition, but never really followed through and, and, and got the job done, you know. So, um, but I feel, you know, um, this year we could do something quite special with a, a bunch of guys that um, uh, we, we've got now and we still waiting for that 17th contracted player to put his uh, pen to paper um, very, very shortly. So, uh, yeah, watch that space uh, in, the next coming, in the coming days. Well, that's excellent to hear. And we're just going to you know, move from one thing to the next in terms of what you said. So the first thing is, you know, obviously, like you mentioned, everyone knows you as a bowling coach. You've been around the world. You've, you've done very, very well. Um, but it was also good to see that you've – decided I'm going to expand my, my skills here. Was that sort of like the, the mindset, the approach there that I want to be known as a coach and this is going to help me improve my skills, not only as a cricketer, but even as a person? Oh, definitely. Definitely. And, uh, and I think that that's where Bob Woolman was fantastic for my development as a, as a, as a future coach and, and what he has done and, and how well Hansi Cronier and Bob Woolmer dovetailed together. You know, Bob Woolmer was that inventor and Hansi Cronier was the organizer. He was the man manager. Um, and the two of them just had an instant connection uh, that made that South African team the great team that it was in the mid-90s. Um, so, yes, the answer is yes. I, I, I just don't want to sit there and be labeled as a, as a bowling coach coach. Uh, that's a skill that I can take in as a head coach um, and, and, and work with that and, and, and um, organize the rest. So, look, for me, it was always going to be uh, – you always go when – you, when you do land that job as a head coach, you always know that this is a real big job now. The, the responsibilities are far greater than any, uh, any 
imagine. Um, but I feel comfortable in the environment because I've spent so much time in international scenes yeah. that I, I just feel yeah. that it's, it's, I, I feel okay with it. It's not that it makes me, oh, wow, that's bigger than I thought. I didn't expect this. So it's, it's not like I'm, uh, you know, the wow factor is now I've got a, you know, I, I didn't realize it was this big. But yeah. so, but yeah. I feel completely comfortable. Uh, already had six weeks or eight weeks of it. Um, it's all, all planning. Um, you know, we've had a couple of coaches, a couple of new additions to our, our team as well, um, which I felt was so necessary for, especially for our batters. Uh, so we've employed a batting coach, um, and, uh, we've got a psychologist that works with us at the moment. Um, and, uh, so yeah, look, it's, it's nice to have that backup around you, that, that people that surround you with, with a lot of knowledge. Um, and, um, and, uh, but yeah, look, I'm, I'm so excited about the new season and I'm looking forward to the challenge because it is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, I, and I, I know from my experience that coaching roles and the way you coach have changed, you know, you can't coach with authority. Those days are gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. you, you, you've got to listen, you've got to build a, a very strong relationship with players and give them the power to empower themselves and to make, to give them the tools to, to pull the trigger when it's necessary, when those players are under pressure, you know. So, um, Bob Woman's always used to say, listen more than you talk. So, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a great advice. So, uh, you know, think also think before you make a silly, silly, silly remark. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and just to be patient with the process. So I'm, I'm, uh, you know, looking forward to it. It should be a, a one heck of a, one heck of a challenge. Absolutely. No, absolutely. That sounds great. So you mentioned that you're hoping for your, your 17th players to be signed on. In, in terms of the, the planning and how the squad's looking, you, it seems like you've aimed for balance. Do you feel that the squad is balanced going into the upcoming season? Yeah, when we sat down at the end of last summer, uh, when COVID struck, um, you know, that planning meeting took Wow, took a week or so sure. to to get the right people mm. for the for the right roles and the personalities for what we're looking for. Um, so it was vital that we had that correct balance. And um, and I thought that uh, going for the names that we we went for. Uh, and I'll start with um, uh, you know uh, Farisco Adams uh, from the Cobras. Then a, a, a of all rounder with a lot of one day skills, um, just brings so much experience, so much calmness to the group. Uh, then an, a young Matthew Kleinfeld, a, a, a left hand batter from uh, also from the Cobras, lovely, lovely kid. I really have enjoyed his energy and his passion the last few weeks. Um, uh, uh, Jonathan Vandia uh, from the Titans, left handed batter, a real goer with a bat. Um, you know, so um, it gives us so many options. Uh, Jacques Neyman, who's come from uh, uh, Northern Cape, who's joined us. And, uh, and, and so um, a big Michal Pretorius from uh, the Lions. Um, young fast bowler, which I've kept my, my eye on for a while. I think this kid has got something quite special. Um, you know, has had limited chances in the Lions setup. So, um, so yeah, look. And uh, we, we've, we've kept that one spot open yeah. for one reason. We wanted to sign a, a, a big name player, which we think, you know, without giving the, the game up right here, um, but the re for, for one reason is that I feel that I, our youngsters in, in, in the modern day game now don't play under role models enough. Yeah. Um, and I wanted that... 17th contracted player to be a big name player so so and basically to sign him for his minutes in the change room and mm. um you know the guy that we are uh, negotiating with at the moment uh with the, the, there was uh, a, a a rather large individual which we which we <laughs> couldn't get unfortunately um <laughs> But the guy we're going for now is, is, is uh, we're just waiting in the coming days that he is willing to play the whole season for us in all formats. Sure. Um, but to, to have that guy, first of all, on the training ground, 
uh, to have him in our dressing room, to share with our youngsters. Um, and um, just that sharing and just that bond that that leadership brings in our change room with those young guys uh, would mean a heck of a lot. Uh, um, and to have that proper leadership, mm. you know. So uh, I think that also having Wandile Makwetu, who's, who's, who's been named as our uh, vice captain, um, you know, he's a, he's a very impressive young man. Um, I, I've missed, sorry, I've missed one, one uh, other there is, uh, is, is uh, um, oh, wow, I've, I've, I've got so many names now uh, that I've forgotten who the, the, the other guy is. That we, <laughs> It'll come to me in a second. It'll come, yeah, it'll come. Uh, yeah. Alfred Matoa, got him. There we go. Alfred Matoa, he's a young fast bowler from, from the Titans. So, um, so, yeah, look, to have those guys and to have that big name play in our dressing room, and hopefully we'll sign him for two years, um, you know, would be a, a, an awesome injection for the central franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, and also now that we've got an Nzanzi uh, a, a franchise as well now, uh, and the other one's gone to East London, um, I think would, would mean so much more for our sponsors, VKB Knights, uh, VKB, mm-hmm. uh, um, it would, would mean a heck of a lot for our central uh, region. Um, you know, so... But yeah, that's just a, a small little snippet of what we can, you know, yeah. um, dish up hopefully the summer to come start November 1. Well, it seems like you guys have done lots of work behind the scenes and you've used this time properly to get to where you want to go. It sounds absolutely brilliant. It sounds exciting as to what you guys want to achieve. That's excellent. One thing you mentioned there, and then it's so true in, in terms of how you talk to players and that authoritarian where it's, it's pretty much, it's, it's gone out the window. Um, yeah. Does that perhaps mean that maybe players are not wanting to coach anymore and finding the business side of things more attractive now? And because it does take a lot of patience and a lot of understanding in terms of trying to get the most out of players. So are former players wanting to get back into coaching, do you think? Or are they more wanting to look at a business idea? Uh, I don't know. I, I think we've, um, you know, if you look at, around the country, you know, there's there's quite a few ex players now that have that have, and, and big ones. You know, Robin Peterson, that's now the head coach of the Warriors, uh, um, and uh, uh, who else is there? There's uh, Mark Boucher, that was the Titans coach. Yeah. Um, you know, he's been replaced by Mandela Mashambi. Mm. Um, Ashwell Prince, who who's done, you know, who's uh, who's been a in terrific, um, uh, you know, although his side hasn't produced what he he wanted them uh, to produce. A very exciting young coach, uh, very good cricket brain, um, you know. So I don't know. I, I, I you know, it's either it's either in your your blood to coach or not. True. Um, yeah. So it is. It's 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 uh, it, it's something that you really want to do. Um, cricket's always been in my blood, so yeah. and I want to give back. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to give back to yeah. to uh, uh, the youngsters as much as I possibly can, and I think that. Um, um, it, but it's the how, you know, it's the how, and 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 it's how you deliver, um, and it's not the panic you create in the in a change room constantly. Uh, you know, so um, um, and so it's um, it's a, it's a very delicate skill. Um, but yeah, I, I look. I think most players decide they've had enough of the game and they want to go somewhere else and they want to go in the bu- business sector. And uh, um, you know, so it's uh, or, or just get out of cricket completely. So yeah. it's. Um, but I think most of the the, the the guys nowadays they want to get into the profession of coaching, which is great because. You know, I, I really feel that we've got some terrific young coaches across the board in South Africa at the moment, and um, and I'd, I'd love to see more ex players and uh, big ex players uh, get into the in, into that side a lot more. You know, so I think it's important for our cricket. We're a very proud cricket nation, and um, and just making sure that uh, we had a a, web, a webinar, a, a, a Zoom meeting the other day with the, the Northern, sorry, the the Kozulutin Natal uh, inland coaches the other night, and it was a, there was a load of them. There was a lot of them on the screen, and you know that that's our future. You know that's yeah. that's how we teach our little guys mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, um, how you know how to become pro tiers. Um, so. 
yeah, look, it's it's important, and I'm I'm just you know very 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 glad that I'm involved with the Knights, and uh, and hopefully we can turn things around here and make it make it a successful province like it was back back in those days. Mm, absolutely, and, and talking about delivering and, and setting an example, we've got to talk about your your national career. Your bowling average of twenty two point two five is just it's fantastic. Was it an objective or goal of yours and to aim at that figure or was it just sort of like be in the moment, I'm just going to do what I can and make the most of it? Because, I mean, that's a fantastic return there. It's, it's jolly good. Yeah, look, um, that is something you just simply can't plan for. Uh, um, I don't think you – I've never been a figures man myself. I, I, I didn't – if you ask me what my bowling figures, uh, sorry, my, my average was, I would say roughly about the 20 somewhere. Um, but I think that having grown up with, with Hansi Cronier and, and we, 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 we were little, little guys when we first met each other, um, we were always driven by uh, competition. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think that once you take that massive step up, into uh, in, in, into the big world, uh, and I'm talking about the international world. You know, you always want to just be the best you can be. And once you re- you, you you put the green baggy cap on, you want to lock that door and make sure that no one gets your spot. Um, so it wasn't really. I think the focus was about the job that you do mm. and how well you can do that job by be the best competitive cricketer you can be. Um, you know, and so I, I was just driven by that passion, and and I wasn't a big goal setter at all. I I, I kept my goal short on a daily basis, you know. Um, um, and being driven by that, what can I do today that has the most significant outcome um, on on what we've got in front of us today? Sure. Um, so uh, I uh, I really wasn't um, motivated by figures. Um, it really. You know, for me, that sorted itself out in, in the long run. Uh, you know, so it was, a, um, it was more about the passion of playing for Free State, of playing for, for South Africa. Um, and I knew that if my focus was there, then I wouldn't be bothered. You know, the, the, the figures would take care of itself. Well, you, you must have focused a lot <laughs> because, I mean, that's a stupid thing to say, actually, because, I mean, that's what you did. But... Your, your economy was great. And you look at a game like against England in 2000 in Cape Town, you took five for 47 and 26 overs. And you bowled 13 maidens. <laughs> so it just sort of reiterates what you were saying earlier about just being in that strong mindset and the job at hand and focusing on that. And is, is that also part of your sort of coaching that you're trying to sort of implement in some of your quick bowlers as well? Yeah, I think... and. I suppose I better watch what I say, but um, I, I think that the younger generation now is more worried about um, about the, the the contract that he might not get, ah. and 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 I think he's and it's okay to think like that. It's 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 fine, you know. Uh, everyone wants to have a solid job and a, and a four year insurance policy of going, I've got a four-year contract, you know, this is, this is great. But it doesn't work like that. And I think that the, the game has changed a lot from yeah. my era to now. The game has got faster, stronger. The guys are hitting a cricket ball an absolute mile. Um, guys are bowling with a lot more, less fear. So the game, because the one-day game has evolved so much, uh, the... The young fast bowlers today bowl without that fear because they know that there's no shackles on their shoulders that say, you know, if I get it wrong, I'm going to go for six. They just know I'm going to back my length. If I go for six, so be it. I, I've just got to be on it the next ball. So it's a delicate balance now where the aggression side of the game is more, has gone up and up and up. Um, the Australians set the tone way back in the day. They're going to bat at three and a half, four runs and over. The rest of the world, you need to catch up. That's, that's the standard the Aussies have set back in the day. Um, but I think to get back to the modern day cricketer now is that the focus of competing is not quite there. And, and, that, and that's why when I came into the night setup now, 
I found that there, there hasn't been a, a real culture, there hasn't been a real setup of a culture or an identity. Um, and so when you speak about these things in preseason um, and, you, and you go into the season, you find that those things sort of disappear a little bit. Those, the cultures and ID, you know, identities, they sort of split. And, and it's because that the, I think that the younger guy is more under pressure now. They feel the pressure more because if I don't get it right, I haven't got a job. Yeah. And, and so my job is to make sure, and that's where this delicate balance is to make sure that I need to shift the mental, the, the, the thinking of we need to play for the Knights. We need to play for free state cricket. Um, what's important here is the organization. And it's not about, yes, it's about your career. I understand that. But also to find a, a really, really strong balance between thinking, of, all right, what do I do to make this organization a special one again um and and uh and get these guys competing so so look it's a it's a fine line but i think that this you know already we've seen a, b a bunch of youngsters now that are willing to really crank it up and uh um you know hopefully we'll get there but uh I'll, that's, that's just a small insight of i think of how the youngsters think these days yeah no no times have definitely changed but talking about being aggressive, uh, we've got to touch on, on playing against England in England. It's never an easy task. Um, did you enjoy the challenge that Michael Atherton brought to the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a very good friend of mine, and we still have great laughs about yeah. Nottinghamshire in 1998. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it was one of the battles that I will never forget. Um, mm. And I was privileged to be involved with one of the strong-minded individuals in the game. Um, you know, when there was someone to bat for your life and to bat for the team, to bat for the country, that was Michael Athen. He would take that on a hundred times and more often than not uh, has had, a, has had a, um, the wood over us where in, at the Wanderers who will ever – you know, remember the or forget the 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 time that he batted to save that Test match at the Wanderers, um, and um, batting it out there in the last late afternoon on the last day to save the Test match, and then of course that amazing duel between us um, late afternoon as well, where I threw almost I don't know I was just short of a kitchen sink uh, <laughs> at him, and um, and he he got through it. You know, mm. so uh, it, it was a it was an awesome afternoon. I, the atmosphere was just unbelievable. You know, so um, I think what made it um, a little bit harder was when Nasser Hussain was dropped behind uh, of the only catch that Mark Boucher dropped in the whole tour. Um, you know, that that was almost the, the writing on the wall for us when um, when when the catch went down. You know, we yeah. knew. We had a great opportunity in Manchester to, to put England away, and that was 2-0 up. Uh, we, you know, you go to, to, you go to Old Traff, oh, sorry, I, I, um, you go to Nottingham, and you know that it was a matter of time before they fall, but uh, it didn't happen. You know, so, but look, those memories you always treasure. It's, uh, you can't buy those things. They just uh, a due like that, and I've had some skirmishes with the war twins as well. Uh, back in Australia, um, but you know it was it was just awesome battles and 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 so much to learn out of that as well. I took a, you know even worth you know it was ninety eight and almost at the end of my career um, a few years later that but I learned so much out of that. Um, not 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 to be so angry and still be in the moment of of being angry. Um, and still delivering and still putting the pressure on. I think that uh, uh, that was a learning I took out of that. But yeah, he's a he's a he's a good mate, and uh, we still we still chat. We still chat a lot. Awesome. And I remember listening to a talk by Andrew Hudson the one day, and he says on tour, I think things were a bit tough. You know, the team wasn't doing too too well. But to get you sucked up, they put a fish in your aircon unit, and I think it worked. <laughs> Yeah, it was a it was a prank actually. That oh, was in Sri Lanka. It was in Sri Lanka, our very first tour in Sri Lanka, and I was sharing with Richard Snell, 
<laughs> and um, we we couldn't understand where this aircon unit why that's you know it smells really really <laughs> horrific, and we couldn't we couldn't unfortunately we couldn't tell where the smell was coming from, um, and. Um, I noticed Hansi was winding me up about bowling on flat wickets and uh, being effective on flat wickets. Kepler Vessels was was captain and, um, you know, uh, Hansi and Kepler had a way of psyching the bowlers up and obviously me being the leader of that group, um, I I sort of, I, it's not that I did, didn't take it for granted. I was complaining a little bit about the heat and, um, and then every time we came back from practice, um, there was this incredible stench coming from somewhere. So we phoned the hotel uh, reception and we asked them if that's not removed, we want our room to be moved somewhere else. And um, the guys came in and they looked in the air condition unit. There was a massive, massive fish that was put there. Oh, and it, was in there. it was in there for four days, <laughs> four days in there. And we thought it was just, oh. we just thought it was something. They couldn't find the problem. For four days, they couldn't find the problem. Eventually, they sent someone up. So, yeah, um, <laughs> Cronier was in charge of uh, him and I think Hudson and John T. Rhodes, they, they instigated that one. Uh, but that's the sort of joking and stuff that goes on on tour. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's how we, you know, I'm not sure how we got them back, but uh, um, that was a that was a hilarious one. Actually, that was uh, oh, they goodness. got our atten full attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it through that, Mark. <laughs> oh, it was horrific, absolutely horrific. <laughs> Talking about burning attacks, I think South Africa's got a very good fast burning attack. The likes of Nordkare, Rabada, and Gidi. But for goodness' sake, James Anderson and Stuart Broad. Um, how have they managed to sustain their career for so long? I mean, I think James Anderson turned 38 um, and still doing fantastic things, but it's a quite a tough contest in terms of who you think is the stronger bowling attack. So first question is, what has sustained James Anderson? And do you think we've got a slight edge over the England's bowling attack? Yeah, look, I, I've got to take my hat off to that. Uh, uh, those two guys. I mean, they've just been phenomenal. And and uh, you know, we where the those greats uh, get recognised, and 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 that's why they are five hundred and something wickets, and one's got six hundred and something wickets. I think um, um, their their consistency. I mean, you look at Dale Steyn and and what he's achieved in his career, um, and what Rabada is going to achieve in his yeah. career is frightening. And, and the one thing that just sets them apart from ev anything else is their consistency, their hunger, their mm. desire, their fitness, their fitness. Um, you know, they're healthy, they look after themselves. And then I watched that interview and I'm sure a lot of, a lot of and I hope that uh, a lot of youngsters watch that interview with Stuart Broad the other day when he was asked why he was left out and he was visibly angry. He knew that he was fit and ready. He, he has never felt as hungry before. He felt he was unjustifiably being le left out. Um, and then to respond the way he did was, mm. that just, that's why. That's why that guy is one of the greatest and mm. will be one of the greatest English bowlers and one of the greatest bowlers pairs, the two of them yeah. of all time. Um, and look, they've got Mark Wood, who is, who's and I think they use him quite well. He's an impact bowler. Um, he's quick. He's, he just he lengthens his run up a little bit more, so that gives him a little bit more moment, moment, a little bit more momentum, a little bit more rhythm. And uh, look, Woody is fantastic, and I think he just adds that spice, that, that extra pace and gas. That that guy that just fronts up to everything and go. Well, you know, he's our. He's our steamroller. He's a guy that will uh, will come and, and, and fire things up and bowl really, really fast. And look, I think South Africa has got a fantastic, um, uh, uh, you know, you, you look at Rabada, um, I stand corrected, but I think he's, he's already played, has he played 50 tests? Yeah, I think uh, he's something like that. I mean, he's a young man that is, that is has, uh, you know, 
and he's in his twenties. He's going to play if they if he's handled well and looked after well. You know, he's going to play a hundred Test matches. Um, and uh, Ngidi, young, strong, strong boy from um, up north, and 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 I love Nokia. I think that those three guys are uh, the current crop. And there's a young man that you got to look out for, uh, a young 20-year-old, 19-year-old, actually, uh, Gerald Kutsia. Yes. Look out for this kid. He's going to be a good one. He is, uh, um, I think he's exciting, um, not just because he plays for the Knights, but uh, I genuinely feel, <laughs> I genuinely feel he's got a big career ahead of him. I really do. Um you know, so there's a few going around, you know. There's a Patterson still from um, uh, in the Western Cape uh, at, at the Cobras. Um, and there's a few, there's a few uh, around. But uh, look, I just think in terms of comparing, and we had Stain Philander, that partnership is now broken. Then Stain Rabada, and all of a sudden now you're sitting without, you know, Stain is done. Now you've got to build that new relationship with, now it looks like Nokia and, and Rabada. So that, that's, your, that's your next generation now. You know, luckily, you've got Rabada who's so much, got so much experience. Can you believe it? He's not even 30 yet. He's yeah. not even 27 or 26. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's still a youngster that has just, he's just risen so quickly. And he's going to be... He's going to be one of the greats. There's, there's no, no question about it. And those other two can follow him. You know, they're going to be part of a test team for a long time to come and, and other formats as well. Um, but you, Broad, Anderson, wow, you know, just at the moment has a ring to it. Yeah. That they keep producing. doesn't matter where they keep producing. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's just fantastic, you know, for, for us, I think we've got age on our, on our side, yeah. we've got uh, a youth and, and experience on our side, and uh, we've got to add more. We will see that those, young, those other youngsters will, you know, like, like a Kutsia, will, will, will add to that bowling lineup of, of South Africa. Mm, that's exciting times. But I just want to touch on one more international team, Australia. And talk about fast bowlers. They seem to have a knack of producing these jolly quick left arm bowlers. Is that something that they purposely go out and do? I mean, you just have to look at, at Richard Johnson and, and Stock, and you think, wow. I mean, <laughs> those guys are jolly, jolly handy. Or is that just a lack? I got a. Uh, I think it's just very fortunate. We got left arm seamers. You know, Pakistan, for instance, have got a. a a, a, a small army full of left arm seamers, you know, yeah. really exciting kids. Mm. Um, and uh, I think that if you look at it on face value, what Australia have got, they've got a, a large pack, a real big, big pack of, fa of fast bowlers that are rolling off uh, from all, all different states in, 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 in Australia. Um, but, I mean, Stark has done well. Hazelwood has done brilliantly. Um, and, uh, you know, the other guys, the other youngsters, the support bowlers, they, they've done a magnificent job. Um, there's too many names. I can't even remember who these guys are. But they, they really are a fantastic lot. Um, and, and that's why I think Australia probably are in a more fortunate position where they can rotate their attack yeah. um, randomly. You know, and that's what they do so well. They can't afford to have these guys. Uh, you know, there's there's some severe injuries that that uh, um, a lot of them has had. Stark has been, you know, he's been on the operating table with his ankle a number of times. So, um, to have those other young young pups come in and do the job, wow! You know, they they're very very fortunate. No, that's true. And Alan, as you sort of draw to towards an end now, just something that. I think it's jolly great of you to achieve has been inducted in the Hall of Fame in, in 2019. Was it also a bit of a, you know, a surprise <laughs> moment? Because, you know, you work hard, you, you do your thing, you take your wickets and you just keep going. But, I mean, it's, it is a fair than the cap. And how did you feel when you received that award? Look, when I got the mail, I, I, when I got the email from the, the, the CEO of the ICC, uh, I was in, in June 2008. 
18 or 19. I can't remember. Yeah, no, last year, last year, was it? June last year. Yeah. I can't remember. So quick already. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I saw the mail, I, I just could not believe it. You know, I really couldn't believe this was happening. Uh, to be inducted with those names and, and you know, see all the names who have been inducted in that Hall of Fame. Um, Wow, it's a it's a one heck of a privilege, uh, and um, and then the immediate thing that strikes you right away is the people that has got you there, um, even the school teachers, the school coaches. The uh, then you when you as soon as you take that step up, your provincial coaches, your international coaches, and people on the outside, family members um, who's made it possible for you, who believed in you. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was an incredible night uh, um, uh, in Madame, at Madame Tussauds uh, to have shared it with uh, uh, the great Sachin Tendulkar uh, that evening was, um, and Laura Fitzpatrick uh, from Australia, uh, the lady cricketer. You know, it was, a, it was an unreal, surreal evening. Um, you know, Tendulkar spoke so well and so passionately about his family that stuck with him so long. And all his fans, you know, he's the most, um, uh, you know, humble individual that I know uh, that has played his cricket with such passion and distinction and has set, set him, his fans first rather than him himself, you know, he's, he's incredible. So, look, it's, it's a amazing to be part of that group. Um, and uh, I know that... Um, you know, we, we've voted for another South African to be involved in that. Uh, you know, we were now became, become eligible to vote for okay. who you think should be going on there next. And the list just continues. You know, there's so many guys in the queue now. Um, and hopefully we'll see guys like Hashimamla and those people. Um, you can pencil Rabada in and that, I reckon, for years to come. <laughs> yeah. no, no doubt. Yeah. So... It was an awesome evening, um, never to be forgotten, to be honest. Mm, that's great. Absolutely brilliant. And Ellen, just because maybe some people do know, maybe some don't, but I think it was the f your first test of South Africa where you got nicknamed White Lightning. Is that, is that correct? And then what was who, who actually yeah. was White Lightning? <laughs> it was, um, um, it was a, a, a write-up in the um, 92 World Cup we played in... Uh, a warm-up game against WA, Western Australia. And uh, um, the next day in the papers, I think I've, I've, we played a few more warm-up games uh, before our first game against the Aussies in Sydney. And there was a write-up in the Sydney Morning Herald. It's just white lightning rolls. I don't know. There was that headline. And that's where it was born. Oh, there we go. And, and yeah, and that's where this tag came from and you know um i don't know what people think about it to be honest um you know it's uh, it's not something that you feel like you need to live up to it's uh, uh it's a nice little gimmick thing to have and uh you know i suppose people respect you for it but uh it, that's where it started in australia can you believe it <laughs> sort of <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Alan, it's, it's been a really great chat to you. Thank you for the lovely conversation. So good to get your perspective on cricket. And yeah, I'm really wishing the, the Nats well. I'm sure you can't get a comment to get going. Hopefully the season keeps up sooner than later. And I want to wish you guys all the best. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me. Yeah, it was pleasure. great to chat. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Okay, Ryan. All the best, man. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. All right, then. Stay cool. You too. Cheers.